extending the back towards the side and kind of putting him in this position and putting him along with Bane is not going to be a problem. I was ecstatic to learn that they were going to be making Nolan Trilogy figures for this particular Build-A-Figure wave and actually give us, you know, McFarlane toys in the 7-inch scale of the Bale Batman characters, specifically Bale's Batman here, so that he can get something that has that level of quality, detail, prestige, and now I'm thinking to myself, it needed more time. It needed more time because we have a lot of projects down the line. But much like with a gourmet meal, I'd rather them take their time so that it's well made instead of getting me the food quick, only to realize that half of the meat is undercooked and could potentially give me food poisoning. So <laughs> that's essentially what we got going on. Just a tiny bit here from my subjective point of view with the Dark Knight Trilogy Batman here from McFarlane Toys in the 7 inch scale. And off the cuff, you could see that this is that version of Batman. And where McFarlane has always excelled is always giving these figures their leathery kind of look to give the armor this sense of authenticity, this sense of realism to the look. And that still comes across very well with the armoring and the detail on Bale's Batman suit here that went with the Dark Knight version. Whether we're going to get a Batman Begins version later down the line, we will see. But for now, we can definitely see that he doesn't have hockey pads. You can definitely see an awful lot of the individual pieces of the armoring, the shoulder detail, the pieces on his bicep, and then specifically the separation of all the armor and the Kevlar going alongside the thighs. That's very much emblematic of how Bale's suit will look like. And then we get down to the shins, the gauntlets. The gauntlets is actually one of my favorite parts because of the way that they went ahead and made double the rows of the little spikes on his gauntlets, and I really appreciate that. And also very accurate to the way that it looked on film. Some of my other highlights would have to be the utility belt, which is decked out in this chrome gold finish with the little details details on the middle there that pretty much is pretty staple of the Nolan Bale suit uh, utility belt with the little circles there in the middle, the little black. I kind of wish that there was a little bit more of silver detailing because he did have a couple of little silver accents along the sides. But overall, the paint really shines uh, through very well. And then we get to my other favorite part, the cowl. The cowl is chiseled and sculpted beautifully. It is definitely that Bale Batman version. Uh, the jury's still a little out as far as whether this resembles Bale himself because he had a very distinct look to his chin and his upper lip, or lack thereof because he is British, but it doesn't really come across too well for me here. I'm, I, my eyes and my brain are only able to correlate the two because of the rest of the suit. And then we get to the chest symbol, which is a little bigger than it was in the actual film as far as accuracy is concerned, but still, McFarlane giving his own little stylistic choices to some of the more realistic figures, especially the ones taken from movie lines. You can see that they kind of took a couple of liberties. The chest symbol is one of them. It's just a matter of preference, though. It doesn't look bad at all. And for the most part, an awful lot of the armor padding around the abdomen and again the Kevlar kind of hexagonal beehive texture you got underneath some of those pieces looks really good upon first glance it's once we pull back from the figure and see the overall ensemble that we sadly have to give a little bit of merit to some of those nays naysayers that were saying that the proportions were off and they've been saying that for a long time towards McFarlane's and Sometimes I would see the argument, sometimes not. I know that DC Rebirth is probably one of the biggest examples of that argument because of how massive those thighs are. It looks like maybe we will be adding Bale's Batman to that argument as well because you can see right here that, for me, something just feels incredibly off about the proportions. If you were, and here's a little bit of an experiment that I want to perform with you guys. If we were to cover up the top half of the body, you can see that the legs look very identical to each other, very symmetric, and again, the armor padding makes them look wonderful. Then we look at the top half, and overall, not a bad look to the body. The torso looks very in line with the head sculpt, and all synchronizes very well via the neck piece, which is honestly one of my favorite little details, uh, or at least showcases as far as detail and sculpting is concerned, because it actually has that matted finish that I really liked about the suit, and then you also got the little rivets leading up to the back of the neck that is very emblematic of that Dark Knight trilogy suit, so I can appreciate that. It's once we get to, to those arms that then I'm like, hold up, something is amiss. And finally, we look at the grand scale of things. And though it's very admirable that we have a 7-inch 
Dark Knight Trilogy Batman figure, there's just something about the proportions that, again, is just irking me. It's just making me feel like something is off, something is aloof. And it's those goddamn arms. Look at the arms and then look at the legs. It's like, yeah, you know, he did not skip leg day, as I've mentioned in a couple of other McFarlane toy reviews. But those arms are just pale skinny. I mean, it, 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 the top half of this body, specifically those arms, it's like I'm wearing the Batman suit. <laughs> There's virtually nothing going on underneath. And one of the things that really doesn't help this case is twofold. One would have to be the cape. I understand that they were trying to go for a drapey look because the majority of the time his cape in the Dark Knight trilogy is meant to be realistic. It's supposed to be draping down and not supposed to be stylized in a specific way like it is in the comics or even in some of the more exaggerated versions later down the line. But I would have appreciated a little bit of girth coming up here at the top of the cape portion right here because towards the bottom it doesn't look too bad and the material is pretty decent but I, I just don't like how straight and narrow it is here at the top and then it just swings on out towards the out, outwards portions of the bottom here it just makes the whole thing kind of look like one big black tongue and honestly this is probably one of the few McFarlane's I am down to get some kind of custom cape and maybe do a little bit of retrofitting on my own. Then we have the actual sculpting and assembly of the arms themselves. I saw some promo photos that kind of put my concerns at ease from those leaked images from New York Comic Con that made the arms look like they were more flush with the body. Uh, they are not. I Unfortunately, they are not. As I press them down forwards and put them in a neutral position where we have the bicep facing forwards in the natural human-like way, You'll notice that the arms just stand out like this. And I've seen plenty of McFarlane's that are able to just simply flush the arms down to the body. And this one doesn't have that. It actually has the problem of another particular wave that I wasn't a huge fan of. Gotham Knights. And for the Nolan trilogy to also have this problem with their mainline Batman. This is honestly kind of disappointing. And again, working in conjunction with the narrow cape in the back. It just makes those arms stand out much more because of how narrow and skinny and badly sculpted they are around the shoulder area. So I'm thinking to myself, okay, pressing the shoulders, are there any kind of shrugging motion or anything that I can use as far as a butterfly joint to get these things to kind of move about? And there's nothing there. There's no sense of shrugging. And when we get to articulation, there's no other you know things to favor the figure or to rectify this overall now personally i feel like we're off to a good start via the head joint because it's able to rotate 360 degrees and it feels tight enough to be put in a proper position but never too loose that it just feels like it's just gonna go all over the place so it's perfectly snug and it's able to slightly tilt up and down in fact downwards is probably the more favored direction but going towards the top it's actually not too bad either that's mo more than what i can say about some other mcfarlands once we get to shoulders though is where we get into some problems because as i mentioned before there's no sense of shrugging motion going on right there that can rectify a little bit of the awkwardness of the arms but then your only real point of articulation is vertically 360 degrees what about extension well they went with this other method of assembling all this together that we've seen in a couple of other figures, most notably in Justice 2 Batman, because I feel like there's some pieces of the sculpting that felt like they were taken and Frankenstein out of that mold and put into here, spe specifically around the shoulder and chest area. And so when it comes to extending, I think to myself like, okay, uh, I understand that they took the shoulder piece and glued it onto the bottom part here where the bicep and the shoulder meet. So I'm thinking it's going to have to be one of those cases where I have to slide the arm and vertically rotate it so I can get the shoulder piece underneath the cape, slide it back upwards like so, so it tucks inside and then extend it. That way it can go in there and we have some room of leverage. But unfortunately... The joint itself is still pretty stiff and there's actually not much less room for the shoulder piece in here to go before it starts to bunch up and cramp up right here. It's made out of this really, uh, I don't want to say flimsy, but you know, much more flexible piece of rubber. But it's still not doing any favors as far as letting me extend the arm and I don't want to force it because of how early some of these figures are. I don't know what the extent or the extremities rather of the delicate, uh, delicate nature of the joint and the pieces are and so trying to extend you can see right here is a major problem i can't really extend which is ironic because my main complaint was that the arms were too extended out towards the side 
But if I want to at least go into some kind of T-pose or some kind of ability to have him look like he's about to throw a battering or whatever and actually extend the arm above shoulder length, I'm not going to be able to do that. And whenever I try to give it a little bit of force via you know physics and the fulcrum, I start to feel some flexibility and some warping inside of the bicep joint. And that is alarming to me. I don't want to have that happen because I've seen people on Reddit say that somebody, not necessarily for Batman, for, but for some other McFarlane's that have had this issue where the bicep just breaks off and then there goes the arm and the, the figure's screwed. So I don't want to have that problem here. And because of that, I don't want to force the extension. Ultimately, Nolan... Nulling, nulling, not nulling, nulling the the ability to extend the arms to the side altogether. And that's another major disappointment. Again, an ironic one considering how the arms are already extending off to the side and in an awkward way, and that's one of my pet peeves. But I at least want to go all the way with it, and it doesn't look like I can either. Fortunately, we're off to the races from that point because the biceps are able to rotate 360 degrees, and then the two joints at the elbow are fully able to bend all the way upwards, as well as the wrist allowing the hand to rotate 360 degrees and bend inwards and outwards. So everything is pretty on par with what you would expect from McFarlane, and it's good to see that moving forward here in 2023, we're developing more McFarlane's with that those wrist joints as well as those ankle joints. We'll get to them in a bit, but they are able to take the joints that have that piece that's divided in the middle and is shifting in opposite directions so that it feels a bit more robust while at the same time never too loose and still flexible and poseable. So it's good to see that those are making a comeback here and we don't have the obnoxious ball joints that they've been using in years past. Once we get to torso is where, again, I need to be careful because I've seen some reports on Reddit saying that some of their torso pieces have been breaking off from their Bale Batman. Thankfully, that hasn't happened yet, but we do have rotation towards the left and right. I am greeted with some resistance, and again, I don't want to go the full 360, so... Whether you see a B-roll shot that is allowing that to happen, that was just a lucky happenstance. But for now, I'll just say that you can extend from left to right. Not much in the way of crunching, but as I kind of nudge it from left to right, I can also feel the waist rotate, and I could assume it rotates 360 degrees. But again, I don't want to force it too badly because I've heard some people... Uh, document that their torsos are weird on their Bale Batman. But one thing that I am grateful for is that though there's not much in the way of crunching via all of the abdominal armoring going on around right here, you are able to extend the Bale Batman on his torso piece towards the back about that far. So extending the back towards the side and kind of putting him in this position and putting him along with Bane is not going to be a problem. <laughs> Legs are able to extend only about that far, and that's mainly because the diaper this time is a little on the awkward uh, side as far as sculpting and positioning, so do be careful with that as we get extension of the legs forwards towards that direction, that angle right about right there. It is able to extend a little bit towards the back, but not long before it's able to be interrupted by the diaper. And then extension is also a similar fashion where we can only get about that far, but still, it's a pretty modest amount. It's not the full 180, but it is doing an adequate job. Two joints at the knee that are fully able to bend all the way upwards, and much like I mentioned before, those ankle joints that I like a little bit better because they look much more natural are making a comeback here with the two pieces splitting down the middle, but still uh, sculpted in a way that looks cylindrical, so it looks natural to the boot and allows still the pivoting downwards as well as upwards and full rotation on pretty much both ends of that joint so I really really appreciate that and it feels good in hand sadly we take another tumble with the toesies I know a little inconsequential but this time around we get toesies that only stop at about that far they're sculpted in a way where we don't get full mobility of the toes and they're barely even there they're actually much smaller toesies than I've seen in other McFarland's past so that could have been a little better. I know, I know, not exactly the most favorable or glowing review thus far, but one little bright side that I will not take away from this figure is going to be the amount of accessories that they throw in. Of course, we're going to get the pieces to build Bane, but we'll tackle those later in his own separate video. For now, I'll just cover the Batman-centric accessories that he comes with. However, I do think it's a little strange that he threw in not just one, not just two, but three 
full-sized golden batarangs here that are decked out in the exact same uh, paint style as his utility belt. So it definitely works. And it's of course, is shaped in the bat symbol from the Nolan trilogy. And they look really, really good in hand. They're made out of this slightly bendy plastic, but that's good because this kind of uh, allows it to be flexible and be put in hand without ever risking of any kind of damage, whether it be to yourself or to the battering itself and also keeps it from breaking. And it's sculpted actually rather decently and fits into his only real holding hand, which is again another thing that is much more on the wishful thinking part, which is to have an additional fisted hand or an additional holding hand on his left so that we can get a little bit of variety, but here we only got one real option because the other one's fisted. So that's pretty much the extent of the bad ranks, and of course, if you ever lose one, you at least got another set to complement that. Then we get also his famous grapple gun from the Nolan trilogy with that iconic style of grapple. The only nitpick I will apply here is that I could have used a little bit more black accented paint work on the piece itself because overall it's just decked out in that chrome, that golden chrome kind of style. But at the same time, I welcome this as a slight little exercise to maybe start to polish up my customizing skills. And this is actually a really good first step because it's an accessory, it's not the main figure. And I could simply just take it and apply some of those paint decals on my own especially since they're actually rather minuscule, but still they complete the ensemble. The overall sculpt itself though, you can definitely tell that that's the Nolan Trilogy back grapple. And an awful lot of the sculpting and etching, especially along the bottom portions right here where he kind of cocks it so he can shoot out the compressed air to shoot the grapple, actually comes across very well. It does look like it's a little bit on the girthy side, so you are going to have to futz a little bit with the hand because it's actually creased in there rather well but once you do this is pretty much the overall look and it definitely has a, a presence to him as far as that grapple it's it's just a little awkward when you do get a little close up to the hand because of the way that it's futzed in there but overall not too shabby now here's the thing as i was kind of complimenting this review putting my thoughts together I figured that there would be no way for me to actually end the review without making a bit of a comparison, an unfair comparison, mind you, but still one that I think needs to be addressed. And that's going to be towards the Mattel Movie Masters Dark Knight Batman figure. One that I actually most recently covered earlier this year. And as you can see, yes, it is rather night and day as far as the sculpting and the detail and the scale. And I did mention that prior video that there were going to be some proportion problems with the Movie Masters Mattel version because of how square the torso is, how huge the shoulders look in comparison to the rest of his body, specifically his head and neck kind of correlation. And then we get to that head sculpt, which is not necessarily one of the most faithful ones. That's actually one of the strengths that McFarlane has down pat. However... There's actually some things that I personally feel the Movie Masters version got better than Batman because whether the proportions look a little weird on that Movie Masters, it's at least kind of balanced out from top to bottom. Whereas McFarlane, you can see that it's almost like the top half was made by one team and then the bottom half was made by another and thus leading to another weird disassociation going from one part of the body to the next that just throws me off for aloof. And so at least the Movie Masters, it's a bit more consistent as far as how you perceive those proportions. And then we got the cape, which is also narrow, just like the McFarlane version, but at least it's draping in a much wider way to kind of hide a little bit of those issues with proportions and awkward stillness. McFarlane was not able to capably do that, especially when we get to the top part of the cape and thus giving the awkward notion to those arms that really, really bug me. And I have to throw this in for petty measure. The Movie Masters version has the silver accents on the belt as opposed to the McFarlane. But again, an unfair comparison considering that these are two different companies, two different scales because we're going from 6 inch to 7 inch and we also have an awful lot of advancement in technology, 3D printing, etc. to make some of those features on the McFarlane pop way better than they did on the Movie Masters. And for the sake of posterity, let's compare the Bale Batman here to other movie-based McFarlane toys figures, specifically Robert Pattinson's The Batman and Justice League Batman or Batfleck. And off the cuff, you can see that we are pretty much able to showcase the duality of McFarlane toys where 
if given the proper time, I feel like McFarlane excels, especially when they are able to be patient and get the sculpting down right, hence the bat flick, because that's based off of the snacks, Zack Snyder cut in 2021, and seeing that he probably already was working on a form of sculpt for the Justice League original Joss Whedon version from 2017, and of course things happened with the movie, he didn't have the licensing at the time, finally when we got around to Zack Snyder's version, he was able to put that figure out there with some refinements and therefore giving it, giving essentially what is one of my favorite Batman figures in my collection. Then we get to the Robert Pattinson one where we do have the side eye, we have the weird choice of the hand with the hole in it because of the accessory, but it would have been nice to have gotten an alternate hand and other little kerfuffles here and there that make me think this was an issue due to having to tie it into the movie and get it out before the movie was released. Then we have Bill Batman, and though the movie was released 15 years ago, I can't shake the feeling that this was somewhat speed-tracked a little bit to meet demand, get the figures out there, so that then McFarlane can move on to The Flash. And that is definitely a movie tie-in that has a bit of a deadline with its June 16th release time. Purely just a theory, a tinfoil hat theory, that he needed to crunch a little bit on this McFarlane Toys Dark Knight Trilogy wave. The jury's still out on the remaining three figures that I have yet to review, but for now, one of the center focal points of that entire ensemble, which is of course going to be the Cape Crusader himself, Batman here ultimately leaves me a little bit cold because... I cherish the Nolan trilogy. I love this version of Batman. Problems with his voice aside, I, I honestly think that Bale did a wonderful job with the character and is, has kind of embedded himself into the zeitgeist of our comparisons with one of our favorite interpretations of Batman. I mean, everybody universally hates Clooney, some are mixed on Kilmer, but the Nolan take along with Bale's performance is right up there with Keaton as far as people's go-to for their their iconic Batman interpretation. Even though, like I said, people are a little bit mixed on the voice, he nailed Bruce Wayne, he nailed Batman, he nailed the symbol of fear and justice in Gotham. And so to see it get the treatment here in McFarlane Toys form that I think could have been handled a little better ultimately bums me out. And so I'm going to be giving the Dark Knight Trilogy Bale Batman McFarlane Toys figure a 6 out of 10. Should there be a Batman Begins version? I hope that some of these issues are taken into consideration to be fixed, whether it be the weird narrowed down cape or the awkward shoulder placement that make the arms stand out, and just overall the build of those arms to make the entire piece, the entire ensemble, feel like much a better synchronized product. And if that happens, I will definitely be picking it up day one. However, if none of my issues dissuaded you from picking up your own Bale Dark Knight Trilogy Batman figure, then please use the affiliate links in the description. They help with the channel. And in the meantime, if you guys want to check out another McFarlane toy review, check out the one showing up on screen. If you guys like this review, hit the thumbs up button. If not, which I'm certain I understand if you don't, hit the thumbs down. It helps out the algorithm either way. And until the next review, see you guys later and stay humble.